You it is good yo it's your boy Ty back here with another video and in this video today we're going to be going over the top 10 shooting guards in NBA 2K22 my team now similar to my top 10 point guard list it's this is the shooting guard list so the best of the best players to play at that shooting guard position so for example Glenn Rice would be a shooting guard and I don't love Glenn Rice so will he make this list I don't know. That's what you're going to want to stay tuned for. Now, shooting guard list, you got a lot of guys at the same level. Like Glenn Rice, you got a guy like, obviously, Jalen Brown. Those types of guys are, are all near that same type of level. Even Jerry Sloan. I mean, it's hard to really separate the top of the top. So, this is my personal list. Some cards that I've used that have definitely separate, separated themselves. But again, there's going to be a lot of small forwards on this list just to kind of prepare yourself. So before we dive any further, if you are new to my channel and have not yet, make sure to smash that subscribe button as we are on the road to 100,000 subscribers. Starting my list off at number 10 is Big Ben Wallace. Yes, I got Ben Wallace in here over a guy like Jalen Brown, over a guy like I just mentioned in Glenn Rice. And if you want to know why, well, here's there's a couple of reasons. First reason for Ben Wallace is what can he not do on the court? As long as you can green with him, which a lot of you guys will be able to, you give him a coach issue, he's gonna be able to green. He's one of the best defenders, if not the best on-ball defender in the entire game. He is. I mean, on my no money spent, he plays, and I can't imagine not playing him. That's how good Ben Wallace is. So at number 10, I feel like it's a perfect spot for him. Again, if we go back to the shooting guards, yes, you guys could argue a guy like Glenn Rice deserves to be on here over him. But I just feel like, yes, Glenn Rice shoots the ball and makes better plays, but defensively, he's not nearly as good. So I prefer Ben Wallace to Glenn Rice, and that is my personal opinion. Ben Wallace coming in here at number 10. At number 9, a guy very, very similar to Ben Wallace that I think gives you a lot more is Scotty Pippen. Now, he's not going to be as good of a defense player as Ben Wallace, but he is going to be able to make plays with quick dribble style, Kobe size of the tape, and Scotty behind the back. Now, release wise, not as good as Ben's. It's a little on the slower side of things, but it is super easy to time and super easy to green. I have a souped up Scotty Pippen on my road to 250K account, the currently Xbox account that I play in competitive tournaments and stuff with. And my Sky, Soup Scotty still plays to this day. So if you do get a really bad Scotty, he can definitely play until basically the end of time. I love Scotty. He'll always have a special place in my heart. You got the quick dribble style, Scotty behind the back, Kobe sides of escape. This card is the real deal in my team. Now, is he better than Cassie Russell? That's personal preference. Now, the reason I like Kazi Russell is because of his defense. It's that simple. I like Kazi Russell because he is absolutely incredible on the defensive end of the court. And a bonus is the fact that his offense is elite. Quick dribble style, Kobe size, up escape, jump shot three on quick. I like his release a lot more than Scotty's, and that's really why uh, he's up here. He's an absolute cheese on the offensive end of the court. I get it. He only has jump shot three on quick, so if you've used Cedric Maxwell cards like that, even Zion, you might not like Kazzy as much. But what I will say is this. Jump shot three on quick is way easier to green than jump shot three on very quick. Now, I'm not saying it's a better release. I'm not saying it's as good of a release or as cheesy, but it's still a very good release in my team. This card is basically perfect. And I mean, for what? He's not very expensive. So 30K, you can get a top eight point guard in the game or a top eight shooting guard in the game. Uh, excuse me. Sign me up for that every day of the week. At number seven, we're going to plug in clutch time reward Albert King. Now, these, he's pretty different from everybody else we've seen. Quick dribble style still. No Kobe size of escape. Does have Ray Allen base on very quick. Great tendencies as well. Decent enough three ball. He's just one of those cards that unless you get Albert King, it's hard to know how truly good the card is. So without me having Albert King, how am I supposed to sit here and say he's that elite? Now I have done a gameplay with him and he was fine. I mean, he was good in the gameplay, but it's not like I went away from the gameplay thinking he was the best card in the game or anything. Still though, if you have Albert King, he can definitely play in the game. Perfect tendencies, really solid stat badge wise, rail and base on very quick. If I wasn't absolutely in love with the guy at number six, Albert King definitely would have been there. The problem is at number six, I got Vince Carter. A card who I personally am absolutely in love with. Now, yes, his drag back animation is really slow. If you want to kind of not like Vince Carter, 
that should be your reasoning. But outside of that drag back animation, you're looking at nearly a perfect card. Defensively perfect, offensively perfect. And it really comes down to this. Vince Carter's base on very quick is a release I can't get over. Shift drip style, but he does have Kobe size of escape as was the Scotty behind the back. I love Vince Carter's release. I love this Vince Carter. When nobody was running Dunktober Vince, I was running him forever. And it all starts with that release. You need a guy, you need training wheels, guys. Use Vince Carter's release. Even on your my player, even on anything, I promise you, there's something about Vince Carter's release that is just absolutely elite. I can't explain what it is because I honestly don't know. But I'm in love with Vince Carter. I don't even have this card, but if I did and I didn't have all these lock-in rewards that you guys are going to see at the top of my list, he would play it for me. So if you guys do have Vince Carter, just know, without locking in these, these sets that cost a ton of MT or these players that cost a ton of MT, you got an absolutely incredible shooting guard in my team. And number five, then we're going to plug in the Dark Matter Paul George. Now, if you play him in small forward, I'm okay with that. You might see him on my small forward list as well because he's one of those guys that, I mean, it's probably 50-50. 50 percent of people probably play him at shooting guard. 50 percent of people probably play him at small forward. Now, if you know anything about me personally, you know I never have loved Paul George cards in my team, but this card is flawless. I mean, you look at it, he is legitimately flawless in my team. With that being said, Shifty Dribble Style, Paul George size of escape is not great. In the half court, he's not going to move great. Paul George base on quick is okay. Scotty behind the back is obviously incredible. The reason you run this Paul George card is because he is a great defender. Now, with that being said, is he that much better than Scotty? He's not that much better, but he is a little bit better than Scotty. And because of that, he's where he's at. Now, playmaker wise, I still like Scotty Pippen. Release wise, I wouldn't even say Paul George's base is that much better than Scotty. It's just one of those things. He's just the better overall card. And I'm just trying to give you guys my honest opinion on things. Paul George comes in at number five, a very complete and defensive shooting guard in my team. So I might split a lot of opinions. I like Terry Dishinger more though, coming in at number four. A lot of people didn't lock in this card, and if you didn't, you are fine. You don't need this card, but if you did lock him in, I want you to know you still got one of the best shooting guards in the entire game. Scotty behind the back, quick dribble style. D-Rose, obviously, signature combo, which not many people have. Tendency-wise, very, very solid. And, I mean, look at the card. He's nearly perfect. He's nearly perfect with quick dribble style, with a Rudy base on quick, which is absolutely elite. He's not that much different from the Pink Diamond. So, I mean, if, if you want to run the Pink Diamond Terry, you definitely still can. Dark Matter just has more badges, a few better stats coming in at number four on my list. And number three, another lock-in 75th anniversary card, Chris Mullen. The Mullen man in NBA 2K22, my team, is absolutely incredible. And it starts with his shooting badges as well as the ability to have every playmaking badge in the game. And defensively, he is so, so underrated. I didn't lock in for, 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 uh, for obviously, Chris Mullen, but the PlayStation account I play in tournaments on and stuff on CMAR's account, he has Chris Mullen. And Chris Mullen is my starting shooting guard. I absolutely love this card. Tendency-wise, amazing. Quick dribble style. I know he's got a lot of steps, dribble sticks. I don't think they're great. I think they're okay. Scotty behind the back is incredible. Jump shot 22 on very quick is solid. I can't say it's, you know, great, but it is definitely solid. Mullen is a card that if you did lock in, you're still looking at an absolutely incredible card in my team. At number two, out of position, Giannis Antetokounmpo. Now, for Giannis, he's a different type of shooting guard in 2K, right? I didn't really know where to put him because Giannis obviously is a card that I think needs to play. I prefer him at the small forward position, but he is primary shooting guard. So it's one of those things that it's tough to really prioritize where Giannis should be. Finishing wise, very solid. Shooting wise, pretty perfect. Can't get limitless, which does hurt the card, but let's just start with this. Giannis base on quick is incredible, okay? It's incredible. He has fundamental dribble style and playmaker wise, he is fine, but it's the defense, right? It's the defense and the fact that he's 6'11 with a 7'4 wingspan, and it's just the Giannis player build. I mean, if you don't know the Giannis player build, then, then you're missing out because Giannis' player build is just different in my team. I'm not saying Giannis is a need in my team, but Giannis is a need in my team at that small forward position. And coming in as my best shooting guard in my team, I know I put Giannis in the shooting guard category because I have to because he's primary shooting guard, is Cedric Maxwell. Let's talk about a Cedric Maxwell card that, in my opinion, is the best shooting guard in the game. 
Quick dribble style. Kobe sides of escape. Jump shot three on very quick. What is the problem with Cedric Maxwell? There isn't one, right? If you did lock in for the card, again, March 8th, you got the best shooting guard in the game for over a month. So was he worth the lock in? I never say a player is worth the lock in. But what I will say is this. If you locked in for Cedric Maxwell, you got your money's worth. That's what I will say. I locked in for him on my road to 250K account, obviously to play in the 250K finals. And Cedric absolutely hooped. There's no doubt about it. I love Cedric Maxwell. He's going to play on my squad until we get a card that can kind of replicate what he can do. I don't think there's many shooting guards that are going to be as good as Cedric Maxwell in the near future. This card with jump shot three on quick was released ahead of his time. So in general, guys, the shooting guard position is one. If you only go by primary shooting guards, it's pretty weak. Got to include the shoot small forward position. And once you do that, it gets very tough. Now, if you like Eddie Johnson, he's fine. Clay is obviously still fine. If you want to run a guy like uh, Jalen Brown, definitely fine as well. Jerry Sloan's even fine. A lot of great cards, a lot of great shooting guards in my team. But the top of the top are all super expensive. So the budget options, Scottie Pippen, Ben Wallace, Kaz Russell. Then you got the next tier. You got Paul George, Terry Dishinger, obviously Mullen, Giannis, and Cedric. Then you got the free cards in Vince Carter and Albert King if you guys can get your hands on those. You kind of got three tiers there. Let me know your thoughts on the shooting guard position down below in the comments, guys. Drop a like on the video. Subscribe if you are new and as always. Man, I love you guys. Have a blessed day.